Hi everyone, today I'll be reviewing the Hotpoint Standard Freestanding Dishwasher, model HFO3T222WG. Connecting up the machine was very simple and easy, literally about 2 minutes to plug the hoses and electrical cords in and you're off. The machine comes with an easy to understand user manual, which I would say is really important to read before you use the machine for the first time. The manual has a first time use advice section to follow there. There are a small number of settings that you might want to customize before your first use, like the water hardness setting, the rinse aid dosage, and the program you might want to run. If you're using the machine for the very first time, there's a self-cleaning cycle that you can run without any dishes just to clean the machine itself. Figuring out how to access and configure all the settings or which exact program to choose is not really intuitive without the manual. So reading the manual is fairly important for that initial setup before you're familiarized with the machine. But the good news is that with the manual by your side, setting the machine is very simple and easy. I found that once you set up the basic settings, like the water hardness and rinse aid dosage, after that you don't really need to deal with those again, so they don't really come into play in everyday use. Fridge water hardness, or, and press this, the off button to select it. For everyday use, you only really use the wash program cycles, which are a lot more intuitive and simple and easy to set up and use. I liked also that there aren't that many buttons, so it's not too overwhelming or complex. It leans more towards the simply designed side of things. And I'd say once you're familiar with the main programs, the wash programs you want to use, you'll be using them on a regular basis, and at that point the machine becomes like second nature to use. The machine is 85 centimeters tall, so make sure that your kitchen counter will fit that height before ordering. You can get other machines that are a shorter height if you don't have that space. You can take the top of this machine to make it fit into a smaller space, but when we tried that just to explore that option, we found that the build quality feels a little flimsy without the top. I felt like the top holds the sides of the machines together, and without the top it felt a little wobbly and had parts exposed and moving like polystyrene and stuffing. So I'd say that my personal opinion is that it's probably a good idea not to remove the top and to only order this machine if you have the room to fit the 85 centimeters height. The machine is 60 centimeters wide and 60 centimeters deep. The design is simple and sleek overall and the finish looks nice from afar, though if you start examining very very closely pulling at certain areas, you might find that it feels a little less solid than some other machines. In terms of color, the white color is a brilliant bluish white rather than the warm creamy white, and the LED display has a pleasant futuristic blue color to it, which I liked. The door of the machine is easy to open and close. The door handle is one that you just pull, there's nothing to press, no buttons or anything like that, it's just a simple pull to open and close to click shut. Looking inside the machine, the machine has some bright orange decorative parts to it. The baskets feel fairly sturdy, they move as you'd expect, and they stay on the runners all right. There is some flexibility in the layout of the dish places. You can lower or raise the dish holder sections as desired to allow room for more dishes or for more big items like pots and pans. With the cutlery holder, one quirk of it is if you have knives that are a little bit wide or cutlery that's a bit wide, um, it doesn't fit into a lot of the apertures. It actually, I think, only fits into one little one row here. Otherwise, in all the other rows, it doesn't even even here it doesn't fit. You can see here that this entire row is obstructed with a bit of plastic. So you put something here. There's a bit of plastic, so it doesn't go. Also. The handles go up and down a bit, it feels a little bit flimsy, um, but it is certainly functional and does the job, though probably isn't the best one I've seen out there. The spaces for the rinse aid and detergent are easy to open and close. The space for the salt is a little tricky to reach because the lower basket is positioned in a way such that it obstructs the area a little, but it is reachable despite being a tiny bit awkward. The design of the top drawer is generally good, though I did have one small issue with it, and that's that the end of the line where you put the cups has a small gap there, so that if you put a cup it feels a little bit wobbly. But in action we were able to put cups right up to the edge, so it does function well despite feeling a little bit wobbly. 
One thing I would note about the lower basket is that you can't put large plates side by side in the bottom basket because they will touch. But it does work well if you have one row for large plates and one row for small plates. In terms of how many dishes the machine can fit, the specs say it can fit 14 place settings. Looking more closely at the exact spaces available, on the bottom you can fit about 26 to 34 plates for standard use, by which I mean that you'll be closing off one section to fit in the cutlery basket. But you have the option if you want to not put the cutlery basket in there, and in that case you can add more plates and fit up to 40 plates on the bottom layer. You can also fit bowls there, but because they take up more space, you'll be fitting in a little less bowls than you would be plates. For the cutlery basket, I calculated that it can fit approximately 42 to 56 pieces of cutlery, but that's just a rough estimate. On the top drawer, you have 17 slots for small plates or saucers, or you can put bowls here. Again, if you want to put bowls here, then they would be more spread out than the plates, so the whole top layer can fit roughly 9 normal sized bowls. The top layer can fit about 10 mugs or glasses too. In terms of how eco-friendly the machine is, it was given an A++ rating. The most eco-friendly program you can run is program 1, which is the eco program. And the stats on this is that it runs at 50 degrees Celsius, uses 9 liters of water per cycle, and 0.93 kilowatt hours per cycle. The less eco-friendly modes in this machine use at most 17 litres of water per cycle and up to 1.85 kilowatt hours per cycle. But that's for the most intensive cycle, meant for very heavily soiled dishes and pans. In terms of noises that the machine makes, it makes several different kinds of sounds. The first kind are the beeps the machine makes when you press the buttons. These are quite pleasant to the ear and quite soft. The second kind are the beeps the machine makes when you set certain settings, like the water hardness. And some of these are a little loud and piercing, but thankfully you're only exposed to those during the initial setup. And you don't hear those on an everyday basis, so I wouldn't hold this against the machine really. The third kind of sounds the machine makes are the sounds of the machine in action. I found the machine to be really nice and quiet, making only soft water sounds and soft whirring. I was very pleased with how subtle the sound levels are. You can't really hear it even from the next room. Lastly, the machine also makes a little end of cycle chime sound, which is very handy to let you know when the cycle is over. And this is a very pleasant little sound, and it's loud enough for you to hear even if you're in the next room. The first time you ever use the machine, you have to fill it up with about one kilogram of salt and about 110 milliliters of rinse aid. This sounds like a lot, but it's only this much the first time you use it. After this, the machine uses up salt and rinse aid depending on the customized setting that you set. So you don't need to fill up this whole amount each cycle. You just top it up a little bit each time. You can control how much salt the machine uses, and in this way you can also control how expensive each cycle is to run. You do need dishwasher salt to prevent limescale buildup on your dishes and inside your machine, but different areas have different tendencies towards limescale buildup, so it's handy that you can alter the amount of salt the machine uses by changing the water hardness setting in the machine. If you use the hard water setting, it uses more salt, and if you use the average to soft water setting, it uses less salt. We found that on setting 3, which is meant to be midway between hard and soft water, it appeared to not use any salt at all strangely, whereas for setting 4, which is meant for hard water, it used up quite a lot of salt. You can control how much rinse aid each cycle uses by setting the level from 1 to 5, with 1 being no rinse aid and 5 being using up a lot. The instruction manual says that if you see bluish streaks on your dishes and glasses, reduce the rinse aid number, and if you see drops of water or lime scale on your dishes, then increase the number. Regarding the length of time it takes to run a cycle, there are 10 different programs, each with different time frames. The standard cycles with drying frays have the following time frames. The eco cycle is about 3 hours 10 minutes, and the auto normal cycle takes about 2 hours 30 minutes. There is also a turbo function which you can switch on, which allows you to speed up the normal cycle. I think that's why there's a range given in the instruction manual. When we tested it, the normal function with turbo was around 1 hour 47 minutes, something like that. If you're in a hurry, there are also some quicker cycles you can run, but these don't have a drying phase. 
The quick cycles are auto fast, which takes between 40 minutes and an hour and 20 minutes, and express, which takes 30 minutes. The dishwasher has a handy timer to show you the time till the end of cycle, which I thought was useful. In terms of how well the machine cleans our dishes, I should note that we only ever have lightly dirty dishes since our pots and pans aren't dishwasher safe, so I couldn't test the machine on stubborn burnt on food. But from the normal level dirty dishes that we did have and washed, it's cleaned those really well. It left no marks at all and the dishes were all gleaming and clean when they came out. And the glasses we had and the cutlery in particular came out looking really shiny and almost like new. In the product specs, this machine is rated A for washing performance, and our testing found this accurate. We are really happy with how well it cleans. In terms of how well the machine dries the dishes, first of all it's important for me to note, as I mentioned earlier, that not all the cycles have a drying phase. The fast cycles don't have drying phases, so everything will come out pretty wet and will need manual drying. But the longer cycles do have an inbuilt drying phase. For the cycles that do have a drying phase, the machine dries using the method of residual heat, which is different from the method that old machines use. I read an article saying that the new eco-friendly drying technology that is used by new machines isn't as strong or as good as the higher energy consumption drying methods used by a lot of older machines. So with that in mind, perhaps it's not surprising that we found that the drying in this machine wasn't quite as good as our old 20 year old machine. According to the product specs, the machine was rated an A rating for dryness, but compared to my old machine, I found this to be a very generous score, which I'm not sure I agree with. But I did find some ways to help optimize the drying, which I'll share with you. If I left the machine door closed after a cycle finished, say if the load finished at night, I found that in the morning the dishes and cutlery were all pretty wet. So a way to optimize drying is to avoid letting the dishes in your machine sit there after a cycle finishes, and instead to open the door as soon as the cycle finishes to help the water evaporate. I found that when I opened the door right after the load had finished, when the dishes were still warm, initially there were quite a lot of droplets uh, to the touch on the lower edges of the dishes, especially on the lower baskets. But after leaving the door open and allowing evaporation and cooling to occur, within about an hour or so the dishes were pretty dry. I'd say they were about maybe 95% to 98% dry rather than 100%. So the drying isn't perfect, but it's not too bad either, as long as you make sure that you open the door. For maintaining the machine and keeping it nice and clean, we found that cleaning the filters was easy and convenient to do. The filter assembly was easy to open, clean and put back. In summary, I'll do a quick rundown of some of the pros and cons for you. So the main pros for me were that the machine cleans really well, it's not noisy, the flexi load baskets are really convenient. I liked it was customizable with the rinse aid amount and the salt amounts to suit your personal needs. And I like the amount of programs you could choose from, from eco-friendly to fast, from light to intense. The machine also has a delay function that allows you to set the machine to work at a certain time that's convenient to you, such as when the electricity prices are lower. And the cons were the drying phase, which wasn't 100% drying, um, although it wasn't too bad, but it could be better. Some of the beeping sounds uh, in the initial setup were a little bit unpleasant to the ear. Although again, it was only in the beginning setup. It's not something you come across every time you use the machine. And also some of the machine felt a little poorly designed in places, a little flimsy here and there, and particularly the cutry basket could be improved. If I had to give a score for this machine, my rating would be maybe 3.5 out of five. My overall impression is that this is a good machine. It's easy to use, it cleans really well, it dries okay, but my overall feeling was that perhaps there's a fair chance that there may be better machines out there. Having said that, in terms of functionality, it does the job. And if you're looking for a machine at this price point that does a good job and has these features that this machine has, this may be the machine for you. I hope you found this video helpful. Have a good day.